assurance in the heart. And sometimes fear will disable you. Fear, you don't need arms and legs necessarily in your life, but you need peace. You need purpose. And some people are just disabled by fear. They never start running. And God says, go, go and sin no more. Go and tell the world that Jesus lives. Go, go to all that I have for you. Go to the places I'm gonna send you. Go, G-O, put a G-O in front of the word disabled and it spells God is abled. It's not about me, it's not about my ability, it's not anything about that, it's all about Jesus. It's not about what you have or what you don't have or what you wish you had or what you wish you didn't have. It's all about Jesus, that no matter where you are in your life right now, if you ask God to forgive you of your sin and you repent of your sin, God will come into your life, forgive you of your sin, you'll receive his life, his blessings, his life eternal and his life. Life's plan for your life. Not my plan, I don't want my plan. Sometimes we just need to get over ourselves and actually realize that sometimes God actually has a better plan. I suggest a plan to God and he doesn't say anything sometimes. But we gotta understand that God's ways are higher than ours and thoughts are higher than ours and I showed that video for, for the summary of my testimony. And I want you to know in your life, I don't know what you're going through, but God does. And for those of you who don't believe in Jesus yet, maybe you're believing that then all paths lead to heaven. The Bible says that's not true. The Bible says there's only one cure for death and it's resurrection. No one else resurrected from the dead. Not only did he raise himself from the dead, Jesus, as Lord, God in flesh, but he raised other people from the dead. <laughs> that's awesome. And if I believe that I'm following and living in the power of the person who said he was God, who was perfect, who did die for my sin and rose himself from the grave and did say, if you believe in me, I will resurrect you too. Hey, arms and legs or not, for 90 years compared to eternity, I will run the race that God has for me with or without arms and legs, with or without cancer, with or without whatever you want to say at the end of that. If I have Jesus, I have everything I need. Now, does that mean I, I don't have a pair of shoes in my closet just in case he says yes to me? No, I do have a pair, okay? <laughs> just in case, okay? I want to be ready. But what we need healing first is in the inside and to hear the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God, when you hear a phone ring, you pick it up. Okay, when you're sometimes dialing into heaven and it feels like he's not picking up, don't hang up on God, he's listening. I hung up on God because I didn't understand his plan. God said through my parents, Nick, God's got a plan for your life. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, I have a hope, plan and a future. I'm like, no way, there's no race like that. There's no heaven, there's no God. Look at all the pain in the world. If God loved the world, then why is he letting so much pain happen? Later on, you realize in the Bible, God doesn't give us pain, but whatever the enemy tried to use for bad, God turned into good. I can't do anything with my broken pieces, but there's nothing that God cannot do. I've seen pain. I've seen miracles. Yes, I've seen blind people seeing, deaf people hearing. In fact, the first miracle I had seen was when I was 19 in South Africa, starting uh, to be an evangelist 12 years ago. And a woman came up, she gave her life to Jesus, and then we went out the back, we prayed for her back, because her back was like this for like six years. Her legs were uneven, she had a motorbike accident, the doctors wouldn't touch her, and she's like, could you pray for me? I'm like, yeah, sure. So a couple of us, we started praying, my brother was there, my cousin was there. We prayed for 10 seconds, very simple prayer. In Jesus' name be healed. And we repeated that a couple times. Seriously, 10 seconds. And we were like, say what? Did you see that? Yes, I saw that. I'm like. Anytime, I'm ready. It was 
was weird, man. I still had no arms or legs by the end of the night. God will use the foolish things to confound the wise. God can use a man without arms and legs to be his hands and feet, to prove that it's not about Nick. It's not about his ability. It's not about him and his strength and how, how he speaks all around the world and uses his hands greatly as gestures and body language while he gets excited preaching. It's not about me, it's about Jesus. I didn't write my story, Jesus wrote my story. He knew me before the earth began. And I don't know about you, but yeah, it's good to have a job. It's good to have a relationship and get married and have kids. It's good to have that stuff. But until you find Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there will be always something missing. You can't rely on you because you will fail you every single time, just about. I needed him, not just because of this, but for my heart, for my mind. I was listening to the encouragement my parents were saying, but then listening to the lies at the same time, the lies saying, you're not good enough, Nick, just give up. No, I am wonderfully and fearfully made according to Psalm 139. Oh, Nick, you should just give up. No, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. At age 10, I didn't believe the truth because I wasn't running the race. I wasn't in the right race. The race where it's not just getting things in your life and doing things and having things. What happens after you get married? You think you're the happiest person alive. You need to talk to some married people first. <laughs> Amen? Amen? All right, so then after you get married, and I love my wife, trust me. But if you're not happy single in Jesus, then you're not going to be happy married. Amen? Go through marriage, have kids, then what? Well, then you get a job and you promote yourself, get there, work harder, and then what? Get your kids through school, and then what? Send them off to college, and then what? Well, now you start getting the Mustang, and you know, you, you do your own little thing, and you take vacations here and there. Yeah, right, you know, I want you to know something. Then what? Then your kids get married off. I want you to know this. I want you to hear it. Then what? Well, then they have kids. Awesome. And then what? There is a race to run, and sometimes we're nearly taken out altogether. God allows things that we don't understand, but I want you to know if you hold on to him, he'll hold on to you. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart, even when you cannot walk, he'll carry you. By the grace of God, he kept me here on earth, even though I tried to commit suicide at age 10. The bullying at my school convinced me that I was a mistake, that I'd never eventuate to anything. Man, what a lie. When you realize it's just the devil, I say just the devil because the devil's nothing compared to Jesus. And when Jesus starts living in you, you realize, oh, it's just the devil. <laughs> devil, talk to the foot. And get thee beneath me. You are my foot. What? Stool, man. That's why God gave me a foot. I got two toes. Peace. <laughs> and you turn your back on the lies and you come to the truth and the truth will set you free. You can be poor in your pocket, poor in your bank account poor in different ways physically, but rich on the inside. The race is not about being perfectly happy and satisfied here because that's not what we're here to do. Which race have you seen everyone get ready for the race, right? Like they're like, they're like this. I don't do it well, but just imagine. And they're doing this and you hear a bang and the gun goes off and they're like, ah. Oh. So how are you doing? Yeah, good, good, yeah. Nice weather today, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't do that. 
The gun goes off and bang! 